Well, it was New Zealand's first soap, and I think a lot of people in those days uh, were locked in quite heavily to Coronation Street, and there were a lot of people who kind of poo-pooed close to home. But what it did for actors, and I think for the television drama industry as a whole, was uh, give us a very, very good um, stepping off point to increase, expand, and get further into our uh, industry and our expression of drama in New Zealand. We would never have had Close to Home if we hadn't had an Australian controller of programs who understood perfectly you had to have a soap opera to pull the audience and to keep them there, which worked. It's, it's one of the reasons, it's probably the main reason that why um, TV One outrated for all its lifetime as long as they were separate channels, all its lifetime had outrated TV2, South Pacific Television, whatever you want to call it. When you were showrunner on that, it was really, really exciting. We didn't call them showrunners in those days, but um, when, you, when you were, were the, the series writer, it was, it was the best of times. You worked unbelievably hard. We wrote the breakdowns. We, we devised the, the, the long-running soap. We wrote the breakdowns and we edited them. Now these days there are teams of people doing e each of those things. One person did them in those days. We had almost no budget, so you had to fit in with that. You had to fit in with people's schedules. You could only use X number of sets in any one week. Um, and you would save up your precious location for about five weeks so you could have a little story outside. There weren't any taboo subjects. You, you know, you could, you could start to write things you wanted to write. I mean, it was also a factory, and factory television is really good provided that's not all you do. It was very new to be doing a soap opera, and the one thing I do remember is that the first episode uh, was done virtually all at once. Uh, we all stood in our sets in the Avalon studio, and the cameras were in the middle pointing at various different sets, and the fl uh, floor manager raced around, and when it came to your scene, there wasn't any stopping, you just and away you went. And <laughs> so when there was a mistake, they had to stop and go back to the top. Um, and I remember that as being the first episode. I don't think it continued down the track like that. I, I remember being one of the first people to work, walk through the door in, at Avalon. And, and this was like new beginnings. Uh, I felt so privileged to be there at that time. It was very exciting. Um, there was something very pioneer, frontier land about it. And Close to Home was the first soap opera for New Zealand. And John Bage played my husband. I can't even remember what my name was. But um, it, it was very exciting to work in television at that time. It really was. At that time, Close to Home was two episodes a week. And for me, it was the most invaluable training ground. The, the days we spent in the studios, we rehearsed in a hall in Maybe Road in Lower Hutt and then recorded, I think, two days a week in the studio out at Avalon. And at that time they had monitors everywhere and they were quite willing to, to run things back and review. Well, Mayor Jane was a young married woman with three babies really, they were all tiny children if I remember rightly there was, um, there was a baby and then there were a couple of very small children, um, under five I think, I, I might have that wrong, but anyway they were young. And uh, she had, basically she had postnatal depression um, and so she did peculiar things and um, I was only in it for five months. But it was a action packed sort of five months because there was one storyline, story arc that took. Uh, Jane through to being um, taken away and put in an institution. The best thing about it was the live to air shows because sometimes we'd get behind or whatever for whatever reason we'd have to actually do it live to air which was the most exciting way of performing ever and I wish they'd bring it back. I reckon live to air one hour specials of dramas not just variety shows or Dancing with Stars would be brilliant but I really loved it and worked with lots of good actors you know, all the classics in those days. It was directed by all sorts of people, Paul Maunder and John Anderson and Tony Isaacs, oh, the heaps and Ross Jennings, lots of people. And Avalon in those days was thriving. It was a brilliant place. Hundreds and hundreds of people there working. 
I think I'd been labelled with a sort of um, a baddie kind of image quite early on. And when they brought Clive Foster in, he was a lawyer who, who made strong attempts to, to scupper the, uh, uh, the timber business, which I think was at the back of the, uh, the whole series. And um, at that stage, I quite enjoyed playing the baddie. Um, latterly, I became a little tired of it, especially when we got up to Shortland Street and they were still casting me as a baddie. Um, uh, yeah, I enjoyed playing Clive Foster. I wasn't, I suppose, in it terribly long, and that could be because, as you say, it was the New Zealand voice, and at that stage I was still rather much an English voice. So uh, I don't think I quite fitted in with the, the uh, sort of semi-rural scene that they had um, um, embedded that in. People said, ah, you'll n no time at all, you'll be in close to home, and I said, oh, I don't think so. But, of course... Um, I was offered by Ross Jennings, who was a wonderful man, um, the opportunity to play a 38-year-old nymphomaniac housewife from Tipuki. I had this big, tall daughter of 15, and I was at the time about 25, and I took it and ran with it, and uh, it, it was huge fun. There was the business of learning quickly as well um, each week, to cope with the number of episodes that we did. Uh, <laughs> it really is ironical now to think that we thought we were working really hard, you know, doing two episodes a week. Since then I've done Shortland Street, which is just different, it's just different. It's the pace at which you work. Uh -huh. Bill Stalker, who played my husband in it, who's uh, sadly died um, some years later in a motorbike accident, he was huge fun and really naughty and used to send me up and you know we'd rehearse our lines together and he'd say things like oh, you're going to say it like that you know and for an actor you always go oh my god what am I doing wrong and everything but they were a great cast and obviously that's where I met people like Alona Rogers um, and um, yeah it was good. You have to remember New Zealanders had never seen themselves like this on screen before so the most common complaint that we got in those days was these are not typical New Zealanders. These aren't people like you and me. Uh, we never heard our own accent on a regular basis before. There wasn't a lot of it there. I mean, if you go back to the early days, everybody sounds like the Queen. Um, it's, uh, it, it wasn't tremendously groundbreaking. If you tried to do anything different, people would leap up and down and scream. Um, yes, I suppose we did try to push the envelope a little bit but it was very gentle pushing. If you look at those early episodes now, things that were considered absolutely outrageous in those days to talk about, like divorce, uh, now would go past at a 5.30 slot and no one, would, no one would raise a hair. It was incredibly popular, and I can remember at one time uh, waiting to cross the road near a bus stop and a bus pulled up and it was full of children and I waited and it pulled off and I crossed the road and blow me down, the bus came around back to where I was um, because all the school kids recognised the character I'd played as being the killer on Close to Home and they <laughs> all wanted autographs, a whole busload of them just near Courtney Place in Wellington. New Zealanders had always got used to having their television stars being overseas. And suddenly what Close to Home did, especially in Wellington, was that you would see these people walking in the street. Uh, and, and that was, that for audiences was huge. I had a husband who was at Lincoln College at the time. So as soon as I finished work, I would get on a plane and fly back to Christchurch. But even in Christchurch, people would do double takes looking at you and go, but probably they wouldn't come up to you because they weren't used to the fact that they might see you in the street. Frankly, I was surprised it rated so well. I was surprised it kind of held um, TV One's entire schedule together year after year after year um, until the Auckland people got their hold of, got control and got their vengeance um, and killed it off. I, I, it didn't have to die even though it was getting a bit tired and it came and went. It was, it, we didn't know how to keep it going for longer than eight years.